Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Google Home. This is Google's answer to the Amazon Echo, and it's a voice-powered speaker that plays music and can also answer questions for you too, like, okay Google, what's the weather in New York City tomorrow? It'll be mostly sunny tomorrow. With okay, a high Google, of cancel. So you get an idea as to exactly how this thing works. We'll be querying this thing a couple of times throughout this video. Uh, we're also going to be doing a comparison a little later on in the video with an Amazon Echo to see exactly what one can do that the other can't. So we'll uh, get into that in just a second. Now, I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a quick look at the hard hardware, and then we'll see how it all works. Uh, there isn't much to the hardware. You've got a nice fabric bottom on here, uh, nice high quality speakers on this. I would say they're on par with what you might get from the Echo. The Echo might sound a little bit better than this one does, but it's good enough that if you want to fill your house up with sound for a party or something, these will sound uh, very nice, a good range of sound, not too tinny. Uh, this does cost 130 bucks, so it should have some good sound for that price point. It will actually sync up with other devices for multi-room sound as well, which is something the Amazon devices don't do at the moment. So you can direct one of these to play some music or direct a bunch of them in your home to do so if you wish. There's a lot of flexibility to uh, how you can configure this. Uh, there is a mute button here on the back, so if you don't want it listening all the time, you can uh, hit that. Off. It will then turn the microphone off so it doesn't even pick up its trigger word, or of course you could unplug it. Uh, when it is microphone on, it on. is always listening. So if you are uncomfortable with that, uh, you should not buy one, uh, because these things, when they're plugged in, uh, will have that microphone working constantly and uh, be on the lookout for somebody to say that trigger word to then query the Google Cloud servers. And uh, that is one thing you definitely need to keep in mind. Now, what's cool about these things is that they really are just kind of a dumb microphone and speaker. Uh, and when Google makes a change to the product, they make it in their cloud. So it will get better over time without you having to buy new hardware because really this thing is just listening and playing back. Everything else is happening over the internet uh, somewhere else. There are two microphones on board here. They actually uh, pick up at a pretty decent uh, distance away from me. So I was across the room uh, testing this out earlier. It was picking me up very accurately and answering all my questions and everything. So that uh, seems to be working very well and on par with what we've seen on uh, the Amazon Echo. Uh, on the top here, there is a capacitive surface for controlling the volume. So you can um, change the volume here just by rubbing your finger up and down. Uh, you can also uh, tap on it That's once to play back whatever you uh, previously instructed the device to play. You can also cancel its queries. If it picks up something inadvertently and you're nearby, you can just tap on the top of it here to uh, cancel it out. But that's it. It's pretty much a voice activated device and that is what we're going to take a look at right now. Now the big question you might have with a device like this is what do you do with it? And that's one of the fun exploration components of something like this. You can just start asking it random questions and see what it might be able to do for you. So for example, if I wanted to listen to some classical music, I could say, okay Google, play me some classical music. And it will then go out and do sure. some searches Here's a on that. Play music station called Mellow Cello. And it found the Google Play Music Station that will play some cello music for us, apparently. And uh, it'll pick those things at random. You can also be more specific about it with specific artists or albums. It connects up, of course, with Google's uh, own music service, as well as Spotify and a few others. Uh, the Amazon player, of course, will not connect with Google services. So we're in this uh, war of formats again, too. So I think if you're invested heavily in the Google Play infrastructure, or you have a YouTube Red account like I do, and you get the Google Music as part of the deal, uh, this one might be the better choice for that. Uh, so really, you got to take a look on their website to see what music services are compatible. I'm sure those compatibilities will change over time. You can also control smart home devices with this one like you can with the Amazon device. There's fewer available though on this platform, so it's Nest, SmartThings, and Hue Lights, although IFTTT, if this then that, uh, is supported on here. So if you have something that is not compatible with this, but is compatible with IFTTT, you can uh, do it through that. I'm going to probably do a separate video in the next couple of weeks on IFTTT and how it works. It's very powerful, especially when you have an assistant like this that can uh, respond to those kinds of questions. What I can do, though, is ask it to turn my lights on with my hue here real quick. Okay, Google, turn on the studio lamp. Okay, turning the TV lamp on. Okay, Google, make the studio lamp 50%. Okay, setting the TV lamp brightness to 50%. Okay, Google, turn off the lamp. Sure, turning the TV lamp off. So it's kind of like the Star Trek computer in some ways, too. You can even ask it things like, okay, Google, what's the Martian atmospheric density? Let's see if it gets that. 
According to Wikipedia, the highest atmospheric density on Mars is equal to that found 35 kilometers above Earth's surface. So it does a lot, and I think the real advantage here is that it's tied in with the Google search engine, of course, which has a ton of data that uh, is answering questions all day long on people's smartphones and on their computers, and now you've got the ability just to shout at it and get the answer out of the air. It was even able to tell me where to go vote on Tuesday for the upcoming election, so everything that you could think of asking it, it might have an answer for, and I'm finding it's answering more things than my Alexa was able to answer. Another cool feature that it has is the ability to control a Chromecast device or other castable device in your home. So uh, take a look here at my TV in the uh, home theater nook. It's hooked up to an NVIDIA Shield that has Chromecast installed. I can say, okay, Google, play a review of the Google Home on my studio television. Sure, playing a review of the Google Home from YouTube on studio. And so here it went out to YouTube and found the video and is casting it over to my television automatically. Okay, Google, stop. And I can even stop it remotely this way as well. So really cool. I think that's one of the really interesting emerging features of this thing is that it's very tightly integrated with other Google devices and the fact that I can just uh, issue a voice command and have it appear on the television is really cool. Now this is very early days at the time that I'm recording this review. So at the moment it doesn't support anything but YouTube, including movies that I've purchased on uh, Google Play. I'm unable to play uh, right now on my television, but I would imagine over time uh, more services will be added uh, in the cloud that will give this additional functionality for casting and other things. And like the Amazon device, there is a companion app that will keep a log of your queries and give you some more information on the things you might be looking for. Also like the Amazon device, it keeps a, a very detailed log of everything that you ask it, including the recording of your voice. So everything it hears after that trigger word gets sent up to Google, recorded, and is accessible to you on your Google account, but presumably others who have access to your Google account, as well as perhaps government agencies and others who wish to subpoena that account. So just keep those things in mind that after that trigger word is made, everything it hears is sent to Google and recorded and stored. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that this device does not have an ability to differentiate people and their accounts. So you pair it up with one Google account at the moment, and anyone who's in earshot of this device can make queries uh, on your Google account. It doesn't give up your personal information like emails and uh, messages and whatnot, at least not at the moment, uh, but your calendar is in there and people can query that. Uh, so there are things that you might be able to kind of coax out of this device that might uh, fill in some blanks on your personal information. So for example, if a repair person is in your house, they could ask it a question and get information out of it, your roommates, your family members. So uh, just keep those things in mind that if you have other people in your home at any given time, uh, they can ask it a question without a password or any other kind of verification. So now I want to take out my Echo Dot here from Amazon and do a little comparison of uh, these two voice searches to see what one thing can do that the other one can't. So let's start with Alexa here. Alexa, who played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars? In Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, Luke Skywalker was played by Mark Hamill. Alexa, how old is he? I'm sorry. You'll need to specify what you're asking about in your question. So you can see there that Alexa wasn't able to uh, know that I was asking about Mark Hamill. So I'm going to now repeat that question with the Google Home device here. Okay, Google, who played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars? Mark Hamill played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. Okay, Google, how old is he? 65 years old. Okay, Google, where was he born? Oakland, California. So you can see there, it knew I was talking about Mark Hamill and didn't require me to keep asking about the Mark Hamill name. It would just know that uh, the follow-up questions that I was asking uh, were about him. So that was one thing that uh, the Google device does a little better on the artificial intelligence side. Another thing that I found pretty cool was this. Okay, Google, how much does a flight to Atlanta cost on January 5th? Flights from Hartford to Atlanta leaving the 5th of January and coming back the 9th of January start at $187. The shortest flight is about 2 hours 45 minutes long. So you can see Google is making use of its tremendous search engine to give me that information. I'm going to ask the same thing of Alexa now. Alexa, how much is a flight to Atlanta on January 5th? Hmm. I'm not sure what you meant by that question. So there are some things here that I think, again, the power of the Google search engine will make this a lot more useful for things. But Amazon may still have the edge when it comes to buying stuff. So I'm going to ask this question. Alexa, how much does a pack of paper towels cost? 
Amazon's choice for paper towels is Brownie Paper Towels, Giant 24 Count. It's $31.89 total. Would you like to buy it now? No, thank you. The top search result for paper so, towels. Is there we go. And that's the funny thing about this is that you often get upsold in your own home by your Alexa device here. But I could order those paper towels. Like to no, now? I don't want to buy anything. Uh, I could I could have ordered them right here and had them shipped to my home. Uh, Google cannot do that for me just yet. But that may not be such a bad thing there. So overall, I have to say that the uh, Google Home here is really interesting to me. It's got a lot of potential. I don't think it's quite been realized yet, but. Uh, the fact that it's tied in with the Google search engine, we're seeing in just some limited examples here like that flight search and the uh, Martian atmospheric density search that uh, we are getting very close to having the Star Trek computer in our home that we can just ask random things of and have those things executed. Uh, there still are some issues for them to resolve, primarily how to handle uh, security and authentication and how to determine who is who in the home. I'm guessing you could do things by having a phone in proximity or something to identify who the user is. That's the biggest area that I think think uh, might hold up this innovation in the sense that if anyone can walk in your home and start asking personal questions of you and get an answer from your uh, loyal assistant here, that's going to be a problem. So I think a lot of the assistance that we might get from something that knows us very well is going to be limited until there's a really good security solution for uh, making sure that the person it's talking to is authorized to be talking to it. Uh, so that's my one big hold up with it. But as a basic search device, uh, really pretty decent. I'm really impressed with how well it handles uh, the the Chromecasting and the connecting of YouTube to other things, and I'm really excited to see uh, where Google takes this. So it's kind of fun to see a new uh, front developing in uh, the competition war between all these big uh, giant IT companies, and this is a really cool product, and we'll be keeping an eye on this and probably doing some follow-ups in the near future. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.